Hey everyone, I'm Nicolina and welcome back to the channel. If you haven't been to my channel before, if you've never watched one of my videos, you probably clicked on this one because you want to learn how to win more games of Hearthstone Battlegrounds. You started at zero MMR, and once you figured out how the game works, you've been climbing at a pretty steady pace, getting a lot of first place finishes. Now your MMR is better, but the climb has slowed way down. You aren't winning as many games as you used to, but you're still getting third and fourth. There's always someone that's way stronger than you at the end of the game. You're frustrated and aren't sure what you can do to get more wins again. I'm about to show you what your board should look like by the end of a game of Battlegrounds. This should be the comp you're aspiring to build in every single game. You can't get wins unless you know what your end game goal should be, and you're working toward that goal from the start of every game. I just realized that this may seem to go against the advice I gave on ranking up in a previous video. I've said in my other guides that you should be flexible. That's still true. The path you take toward this end goal isn't set in stone. There are multiple routes you can take to get there, depending on the circumstances. It's like you're trying to get to the movie theater at night, and the road you usually take has construction, so you decide to go on the back roads. Yeah, imagine being able to go see a movie. Or do anything, except play Battlegrounds. Anyway, I'm going to show you what you want to have as your final comp every game in an ideal world. If you want to know how to get there, check out this other guide that I will conveniently leave for you right here, and down below in the comment section. Something else to keep in mind, I'm not saying that you can't win with any comp other than this. Absolutely you can't. What I'm saying is that this is the strongest possible comp, so if someone else in your lobby gets this, they will beat you 9 times out of 10 if you have something different. Before I start, the positioning here isn't fixed. That will vary based on your opponent's board by necessity, and I'll talk more about that later in the video. For now, I'm going to go through which cards you should have or be looking for when you're in the late stages of the game, as well as why you need them and some alternatives that you could probably use instead. Let's just start with the quarterback of the team, Amalgadon. Actually, Amalgadon is not only the most important part of the ideal comp, it's also the second most important and sometimes even the third. The more Amalgadons, the better guys. However, this doesn't have to be a menagerie comp. It can also be done with dragons very successfully. It can be done with elementals or murlocs, but I say those are less than ideal. The catch here is that they have to have poison and divine shield or they're pretty much useless. Of course, we know that's not exactly a guarantee. So you want to maximize your odds here by of course using Bran or the Dark Moon Prize Bran's Blessing to double the battle cry. So if you don't have a Bran and you get Bran's Blessing on turn 8, it's smart to hang on to it for a turn or two until you can either triple something into an Amalgadon or just find one on Tavern 6. Your goal should be to go to 6 on turn 8 when you get the prize or at least the turn after. This meta is heavily focused on eventually getting to Tavern 6. The days where you could win the game from Tavern 5 are pretty much over. My recent guide to power leveling can help you out there. Of course, if there are mechs or murlocs in the lobby, that can give you an adapt you missed on the battle cry. Just pick up Toxfin or Primal Fin for Poison, or a Noya module for Divine Shield. The next most important adapt is Taunt. You want it to have Taunt if possible, but it's not, it's not absolutely essential. The next card you need is something that will make those Amalgadons huge. That can be Bran, Lightfang, or Caligos. Back in my day, it used to be good enough to get one Caligos, and two was pretty insane. Now you pretty much need to triple it, at least. Luckily, that is a lot easier now with the Dark Moon Prizes, Faceless Tavern Goer, and some hero powers like Zephyrs and Silas. There are more ways to triple 5 and 6 drop minions than previously, so don't expect to just coast through the rest of the game when you get the first Caligos. The same thing goes for Lightfang. You need more than one, so tripling it is best so that it doesn't take up two of your board spots. You could also use a combination of two of these, like one Lightfang, one Bran, one Caligos, one Bran, one Lightfang, one Caligos. But that's the worst option unless you have three Amalgadon, and it also takes up two spots on the board. So if you have Caligos, obviously you want to fill out the rest of your team with more dragons. The best dragons to use are realistically any dragons at that point, especially if you're getting rid of your menagerie team to focus on the dragons which you would likely do if you found a second or third Caligos. Other than Amalgadon, Razorgore, and Draconid Enforcer are the best dragons. Just fill out the rest of the board with any old dragon, though, if you have to. Make sure to leave a spot open for the battle cries at all times, of course, you know that. Additionally, with dragons, you'll need to have Nadina, and if you do, Divine Shield and Amalgadons become less necessary. So that's pretty much dragons taken care of right there, and they haven't changed playstyle or anything, but I had to talk about them a bit because the Triple Caligos Nadina comp is just as good as the Ultimate Menagerie comp. Back to the Menagerie. We've got our Amalgadons and our Triple Lightfanger Bran. There are still some spots left on our board. If we say we have two Amalgadon, then we have four more spots. So what should we do about them? Clearly, if you have Lightfang, you want to have minions of different types, and that will depend on what's available in your game. The last spot, the very last spot, I'll discuss later. 
But right now, I'll tell you what the best and second best and sometimes third best minion for each tribe is to include in your menagerie team. For beasts, Hydra is easily the best. Cleaves are going to be at the top of the list if the tribe has it. The reason why is easy to see. Hydra hits three targets, so it has triple the damage output of a unit that only hits one target. And that's math. If you have Bran, prioritize buying buffs for the Hydra first. The next best beast is Mixna because she has Poisonous. It's good to give her Divine Shield with the Dark Moon prize, but just having poison makes her a better choice than the rest. Gas Coiler is also great for dealing extra death rattle damage, but it needs to have big stats by itself as well. The quality of beast drops off a cliff here, because your other options are kind of just high main or dire horn. If you have a big triple lizard or alley cat from earlier in the game or something beefy like that, as long as it has stats, it will be fine. You can go menagerie and win the game even if dragons are available, but you probably should have one dragon on your board. And that dragon should probably be Bronze Warden. Bronze Warden is an amazing card. It has Divine Shield and it is very often the last minion to survive the fight and deal damage to your opponent because it has Reborn. The next best dragon to have would be Caligos because he also gives himself a buff when you buy a battle cry. Draconid Enforcer is good too if you have a bunch of Divine Shields, but you don't need to have full dragons to get a Caligos. The reason you wouldn't do that would be if you already have some very good minions of other types. Scalebane is the next best, but he isn't super impactful. Herald is pretty useless because it's unlikely to overkill something, and even when it does, the 3 damage dealt to the leftmost minion won't make much of a difference. I don't recommend Glyph Guardian because there isn't a great position for him on the board in a menagerie team. The strength of this comp lies partly in having access to Cleave, Wind Fury, and Divine Shield. That brings me to Elementals because that's where we'll get our Wind Fury. Wind Fury is great for a number of reasons. The potential to kill 2 minions for 1 attack is ridiculous, and clearing 4 minions before your opponent can even attack at all with Mega Wind Fury is just disgusting. It disrupts your opponent's board position in a way that they can't predict or play around. It forces them to go through several what-if scenarios in their mind when deciding on their position. Making your opponent deal with uncertainty can cause them to overthink things and not arrive at the ideal position they should use to beat you before the end of the turn. So Crackling Cyclone is the best elemental, but there are some others you could use. Wildfire Elemental is decent because he can get lucky and attack a minion without Divine Shield and kill it, damaging or even clearing the minion next to it as well. Sometimes you might have a big Molten Rock or Gar, which is reasonable if you've had it the whole game, or I mean in Gar's case you can't, but he can get pretty big pretty fast. As far as demons go, Imp Mama would be the best to have since she summons taunts, which again can disrupt your opponent's attacks. Demons have the weakest offerings overall, as they never have Divine Shield, Wind Fury, or Cleave. You know, the good stuff. Battlemaster is okay, but it needs to have significant attack buffs, or it will just fall victim to value traits. Soul Devourer is a nice new way to add a bit more attack to those stats for free. I would not bother with literally any other demon. If you started the game with demons, you can actually use your Wrathweaver in a spot, as long as it's big enough, so I'd say at least 40-40. This becomes better if you gave it Gruel Rules earlier on, so it can grow each turn along with the rest of your team. The mech in this comp is ideally a taunt with Divine Shield, which can be any mech at all. Faux Reaper is best for the same reason that I talked about before as Hydra. We definitely wanted to have Divine Shield, so you should get an Anoyo module. This will give it taunt, but that should be fine even if you go second because you'll have other taunts like Amalgadon or you'll have a Lystra. Egg or Sneeds is usually second best, but you might have a big Micro Mummy, Kaboomba, or Harvest Golem from earlier, and that works too. After Hydra, your Divine Shield mech is the next most important unit to buff with Bran because it doesn't have poison, so you want it to deal as much damage as possible to your opponent's primary attacker. It literally does not make a difference which Murloc you use as long as it has poison. Don't bother keeping a Murloc unless you can give it poison. Pretty much the same goes for pirates. The only good pirate is Eliza. She's useful if you're using an Amalgadon as your first or second attacker. If you are, it probably has Wind Fury, so it's kind of a nice buff to the rest of your team. And you can use Eliza for that buff too. Gold Grubber could be considered, but obviously it's only actually good if you have a few triples so it can get really large. Otherwise, it's not worth it to have a pirate on board. So that's your main team. In a minute, I'll show you a few example fights where I had this comp and we'll look at how the fight played out and how each piece did or did not do its job. But first, we still have one more spot. The last spot should be filled by Elystra. She is just a massive disruptive force, even after being nerfed from 7-7 down to 4-4. She will absorb 4 hits from your opponent. If they don't have any Wind Fury minions or their own Elystra, that's 4 attacking turns in which your minions can deal damage and theirs can't. By the final fight, your opponent probably will have Wind Fury and Elystra, 
So this means that you need to have her too, or they will get that attack turn advantage over you. Another big benefit of a Lystra is allowing your taunted Faux Reaper and Amalgadons to attack early on and use their Divine Shields without fear of being destroyed, for free, by your opponent's Divine Shields. You really don't want them to get hit by a Crackling Cyclone Shield because that's a big waste and it puts you behind in the Shield Trade during the fight. The way Divine Shield Trades play out is a huge, huge factor in the final few rounds, so forcing your opponent to run their Cyclone into a 4-4 is fantastic. I can't talk up a Lystra enough, guys. As if all that wasn't enough, she gives you control over where your opponent's cleave hits as long as their cleave is in their first 4 attacks before she dies. If it is, it's only going to hit Elystra and whatever you put next to her, doing 2 times damage instead of 3 times. Now we're getting into talking about positioning, so it would probably be helpful to look at a board while we talk about this, wouldn't it? Let's look at two different arrangements, one for an opponent without Elystra and then one for one with it. I'll talk about our opponent with no Elystra first. Our board has two Amalgadons, both with Divine Shield, Taunt, and Poison. One of them has Wind Fury. We also have a Light Fang, Hydra, Poison Murloc, Divine Shield, Taunt Bomb, and a Lystra. We just fought our opponent last round and they popped our Ice Block, so we need to figure out the position that will maximize our odds of winning the next fight. We immediately run into a problem. We know our opponent has their Cleave third, although they could change it, but we need something next to our Lystra to absorb the extra damage. However, we also need to break their shield while wasting as little of our damage as possible. We obviously can't put our Hydra next to the Elystra. We also don't want the shields on our poisonous amalgams wiped off by the cleave. Lastly, we don't want our Murloc without the shield killed by the cleave. That leaves our options for 6th place as Light Fang and Bomb. We don't want either of our Amalgadons to trade their shield for the opponents because we want to come out ahead of the trade instead of equally. We also don't want cleave to only hit 1 minion. We also don't want to use poison on it. So our options for 1st position are also Light Fang and Bomb. It would really be fine to do either one, because Light Fang will die either way no matter what you do, and the shield will be wasted as well. Since the Elystra won't kill their cleave, it might attack again. If it does, we want to minimize the chance that it hits an Amalgadon, which we can do by separating the taunts, so they're not next to each other. If we have a taunt on the very end, which we will when Elystra dies, the cleave might hit only the bomb and the minion next to it. So we put the Light Fang first and the bomb next to Elystra. Second, we'll put the Amalgadon with Wind Fury so that it will KO the taunt using Divine Shield and then immediately take something else off the board, assuming it didn't run into a Divine Shield. At this point, their taunt and hopefully one other minion will be dead as well, and we'll have a 6 to 5 advantage if we went second, or the Amalgadon died on the second hit, or 7 to 5 if we went first and the Amalgadon survived. Third is an interesting position and a difficult one to assign correctly. Their taunt is gone, so it's really tempting to put Hydra here. However, that's not always right. If they have a lot of big minions but no shields, our Poison Murloc should go here to take out another minion with one attack. It will usually trade one for one. If they have some or mostly shields, Hydra can go third just to clear those off. It might not kill anything, but that's okay. It's just clearing the way for our other poisonous minions. So you can see how positioning really depends on what our opponent has. Their attacker will hit one of our taunts and die if the taunt it hits is an Amalgadon. It will probably live if it hits the bomb. The best thing for us would be if it hits the shield on the second Amalgadon. We put that fourth just in case the shield hasn't been used yet. Hydra should definitely not go later than fifth. Third or fourth is really the best place for Hydra when an opponent doesn't have a Lystra, so that it doesn't die before attacking. So let's say that we put Hydra third, Amalgadon fourth, and the Poison Murloc fifth. The Murloc and the bomb are our weakest units when our opponent has Cleave and Divine Shield, so that's why they're left for last. So if our opponent does have a Lystra, our position will change slightly. We'll still want Light Fang first so we can break Elystra's shield. We don't really want to waste the Poison Shield on it, so if we put the Murloc second, we know it's trading one for one with any other minion, it's hitting Elystra for free. If we don't use the Wind Fury on Elystra and they do, we will be behind on trades, but we'll make up for that with our Amalgadon shields. If you liked this guide, I have a bunch of others in a playlist that I will link right here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I will see you next time.